Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, hi, it's nice to meet you. My name is Emma and today we have a few bookish Halloween costumes to make and create. I thought it would be fun to take a whole bunch of characters from some of my books and turn them into Halloween costumes. As for right now, I'm currently still in my um, penguin pajamas. So let's go find our first book and our first costume. Let's do it. So all of these costumes were thankfully composed of pieces that I already had in my closet. I tried not to go out and buy anything and I actually ended up having everything I needed. So for this first one, you're gonna need a black dress, a red bow, <laughs> um, and if you haven't guessed it, yep, it is Kiki's delivery service, which I recently read and loved. So I just put my hair up so I could basically just put the bow right at the top of my head where Kiki has it. I just, I love her so much. She is so full of optimism and light and I wish I could just be like her and have her mindset all of the time. The black dress and the red bow I found thrifted a few years ago and Kiki also has a really cute kind of brown satchel in which she stores all her posts that she may need to deliver or parcels that she has to hand off so I threw that on as well. So if you are familiar with Kiki's delivery service, you are probably thinking of the Studio Ghibli film. However, I recently found out that it was actually a book first and I actually read it this month in October. It was wonderful. If you don't know the story, we're following Kiki and as kind of her coming of age ceremony, she is a witch. She has to voyage and fly and pick out a new town to kind of be their friendly neighborhood witch and help them out and just be their local witch that they can go to for any Thing that they may need. So her and her sassy cat Gigi, who unfortunately, I wish I had a cat so badly, um, her sassy cat Gigi, they pick out this town, but unfortunately when they get there, they find out that this town is not very partial, shall we say, to welcoming a new witch because they've gotten on just fine without a witch for many, many years. So you kind of follow Kiki and Gigi as they have to navigate this town and try to win over the townspeople to like them, to welcome her into the community. And it's just a really, really sweet, wholesome, um, wonderful witchy book and I just I love I loved it so much she also carries a broom however I did not have a very nice looking broom so if you happen to have one made of like twigs and stuff that is all you will need for this really really nice easy costume and now for something completely different, I turned to my little dark academia corner and pulled out The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I honestly have so many dark academia-ish outfits in my closet, I could do a whole lookbook for that, which I am thinking of doing, but basically the staples are black turtleneck, tweed pants, dark jacket, and you're, you're good to go. For the complete makeup look, all you need to do is accentuate your already dark under eye circles to make it look as though you've been up for the past three nights in a row reading Keats or trying to summon Dionysus under the Halloween moon. All right, so costume number one I'm putting together is for The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Honestly, first of all, Dark Academia has gained like so much traction recently, but I think even just going as like Dark Academia, the whole aesthetic for a Halloween costume would be super cool, basically. But um, for this look that I'm putting together, you could pretty much just say it's any one of the characters from The Secret History, we have Richard, our protagonist. We have Henry Winter, very melodramatic. We have Francis, we have Bunny. Anyway, you could 100% be any of these characters because they're described as wearing all black all the time, looking very haggard, very tired. You could probably like carry this book around with you as part of your costume and it would be very meta. Anyway, let's get on with the look. I first read The Secret History about two years ago and I didn't love it as much as everyone else seems to idolize it, especially the dark academia kind of community, I guess, but I still did enjoy it. It basically follows these students who only take and study ancient Greek and basically all of their really arrogant, awful problems. There's murder, there's intrigue. Alright, so this hat I found online a few years ago. This coat I found in my grandma's closet um, in her old house. She has no memory of whose it was, so it's kind of a mystery coat. Got this turtleneck at a thrift store. This bag I found at Target in my first year of high school. I was obsessed with it. These pants are also thrifted. 
and my shoes are from Walmart. <laughs> oh my gosh, I might as well put these books to good use <laughs> somehow. Latin or Greek? That is the question. Honestly, Greek, because secret history focuses more on that. If you are going to any virtual Halloween parties, make sure to annoy the heck out of the other party goers by reciting as much Latin poetry as you can. In general as well, just be as moody and pretentious as you could possibly be. I got super hungry so I'm pausing to have some oatmeal but I do want to do like more of these videos in the future. If you guys have any more outfit, costume, characters you'd like to see, whether they're from books or not, is honestly fine with me. So also just wanted to say please have a very safe and happy and healthy Halloween no matter what you're doing. Just be safe. My plans are definitely just to stay in. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, not going to any parties. I'm actually going to be hosting a live show with the book club, so that's going to be super fun if you'd like to join us. The details are in the description, and I don't know what else. I'm going to make a really yummy dinner, maybe some spooky lasagna, and I'm going to carve a pumpkin and maybe go to bed by like 9 p.m. honestly, so those are my plans. Next up, I headed over to my fantasy shelf to pick out a really fun trilogy. If you haven't heard of it, it is A Darker Shade of Magic by V. E. Schwab. This costume is for Delilah Bard, who is basically just chaos personified. For Lila, I started off with the same black dress as I was wearing for Kiki, as well as throwing this huge maroon cloak that I found at a different thrift store on top of it because it just seemed like a very Victoria Schwab kind of color. If you have not read A Darker Shade of Magic, Delilah Bard is a girl living in Grey London whose city is parallel with Red London, and Red London has a lot of magic and power. One day, Kel, a smuggler from Red London, crosses over to Grey London, and she will not leave this man alone until he promises to take her on an adventure because that is all she wants out of life. In general, Delilah basically just wants to start fights with everyone and everything, so try your best to look as sassy and unsatisfied as you possibly could. She basically blackmails Kel into letting her into his world, and once there, she refuses to leave. So in the second book, which I actually loved a lot more than the first, she disguises herself as a boy to be let aboard this pirate captain's ship because sailing on a pirate ship has been her life's dream. I mean, okay. So for this look, I found the only vaguely piratey shirt I had in my closet, which was this white button down, paired it with a black turtleneck underneath, did my hair up, and threw on the cape again. She also somehow gets her hands on a wand in the second book and ends up killing this guy to take his place in the Essentosh, or the tournament that the whole second book centers around. I had to throw some sort of classic on here because I've had this red dress in my closet for years and I've never worn it because I had no idea what the heck to use it for, but Lizzie Bennet seemed like the perfect opportunity. So for the hair, I just fixed it back in this low bun and tried to pull some strands out because at least in the 2005 Keira Knightley film, her hair seems to be always falling out and very unruly. I did find this gorgeous red dress at a thrift store and I was trying to find some inspiration from the 2005 movie of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Honestly, I love this book so much. It is also such a stunning movie. If you hear someone say anything that could even vaguely be constructed as an insult against you, make sure not to accept their marriage proposal until they've asked you at least twice. And of course, make sure to compliment your host on what excellent boiled potatoes they've just served you. You've never seen a finer example of a vegetable. And now for my favorite novel of all time, The Phantom of the Opera. I really wanted to do a costume for The Phantom, or even better, do the costume of The Phantom's Costume of the Red Death, but I had to work with what I had, so Christine was the answer. Pretty much just pick the fanciest dress you have in your closet, and for me, it was this pale pink thrifted nightgown that I found eons ago. I layered this infinity scarf over top of it and later decided to add the red cloak back on because that felt very phantom as well as a gold ring which Christine wears in the book.
To complete your persona, spend the evening breaking your friend's eardrums while you sing bad opera and try your best to walk into every single mirror that you pass by. I had to include one of my all-time favorite Halloween reads, which is of course Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I started off with a pair of jeans that I thought just screamed Coraline because they had little like glittery gold cutouts in them. I don't know, it just felt like something she could wear. In the film, she wears a stripy orange top, so I chose to go with a black and white striped blouse and of course the iconic yellow raincoat. I do not own yellow rain boots, although that is a life goal of mine, so we had to make do with the brown boots. Those are some of my favorite bookish costumes. If you are dressing up for Halloween, please let me know what you're going to be. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a very happy Halloween. <laughs> Ciao.